Hey guys, welcome back to Economics and Comics. Uh, this is a full spoiler review of Hellboy. If you do not want to see spoilers, please watch our non-spoiler review or go to GoneWithTheTwins.com and check out their written review of this movie, Hellboy. This is Joel and Mike Massey from Gone With The Twins. Thanks so much uh, for having us back. And uh, let's get let's get right into it. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, again, this is not a Guillermo del Toro film, guys. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> very very obvious right from the start. Yeah, the, the story's all over the place. The uh, this is I, I had a lot of problems with the storytelling aspect of it. It's the pacing is just really bad. They're constantly jumping from one sequence to the next. There's there's not an uh, a, a interesting flow to the film. And also, I think one of the big problems is even. Even if you can forgive all of that, it's I think David Harbour is just not the same kind of He's not fun Hellboy. Yeah. yeah, you know it's he, he doesn't bring like, the charisma and the you know no, the, there's the nothing there. It's a, like they're saying uh, it's a flat act. It's just it's not there. You know they start off in Tijuana, like you know he's there trying to find an agent, and uh, he's the agent got turned into a vampire. It's a whole uh, Mexican wrestling thing, uh, lucha libre, and they end up having a wrestling match. This is what we get introduced with Hellboy. And it turns out to be a vampire, and it, like with wings and all that, a demon vampire, and it's just horrible. It, it's a, a completely unnecessary yeah. sequence. A lot of it? It, it, they fight, and it's it, meant it, as an introduction of sorts. Yeah, but we already know who they Hellboy kind of is. Like, we, Hellboy's like throws out one-liners and things while he's you know fighting. But they're this. not funny either. Yeah, no, it yeah, it's just it's very unnecessary. But you know, on the flip side, uh, Mila Jovovich, I thought she kind of. Did did uh she tried her hardest right yeah. she she had a lot more enthusiasm she she, she took things she took seriously it even though it's a yeah. terrible part so in the film she is the villain uh, Vivian uh, Nimue she's an evil witch from you know the King Arthur days and King Arthur used Excalibur to kill her and they do a quick origin of yeah. the story so they basically oh, King right. Arthur kills her cuts her into a bunch of pieces and they bury all these pieces in different places around the world yeah just your average day hide everything around the world so no one ever can get it type of movie. yeah so then in the present day they have this pig warrior guy which actually i liked that character because a lot of the scenes he was a practical he was a yeah. guy inside of a but, giant pig costume but and, and, oh he and, was and, i thought he was cg well his face there, was some of it was cg some of it wasn't but he, he i mean he just looks like bebop and rocksteady from Daddy, yeah he looks but exactly ninja turtles like but he's he's just a henchman and he goes around and collects all the body parts and guess what oh he puts her back together and so she can wreak havoc on the but it doesn't the compare modern world. He, his character the warthog or whatever he is does not compare to guillermo del toro's characters the guy who throws the thing uh yeah. the bad guys in the older movies right i mean this yeah. is just a total... even uh samael was the creature from yeah that from the first yeah movie. this is just uh they're starting over guys it's not number three first of all and it's just it's rough. It's you're you're not gonna get the same feel. It's frustrating for me. Um, so what uh, they find her, then they start breaking off. Oh, we missed the whole part where uh, they go hunting. They, <laughs> oh yeah, it's a it's, it's a complete red herring that, that's nothing. Place. But basically, there's a, an equivalent of the BPRD in uh, England, and it's called the Osiris Club. And they invite Hellboy to come help them because they're trying to kill three giants. Yeah. And they apparently they can maybe kill two, but they can't kill the third yeah. without. It's a trap. So it's a trap. Yeah, it's an ambush. Yeah. So when he gets there, they try and kill him instead. Yeah, because he's going to end the world. And yeah, all these people are saying, just like every one other movie, you know, he's going to end the world. So they eventually try to stop him. And it's it, it's, a, it's a pretty confusing storyline. You know, they, they keep going from one place to the next. Uh, you know, that, And then at this point, I think there's a little flashback that redoes his little origin story yeah, about where yeah. the Nazis tried uh, to everybody resurrect. Everybody in this uh, film gets a flashback. Rasputin <laughs> Ian Mc, McShane gets a... He, he plays the uh, the father of Hellboy. He gets a flashback, and uh, Mila Jovovich's character gets a flashback. <laughs> and, Lobster Johnson's uh, in that scene from Hellboy 1 where they, he, he's born to Earth when the Nazis are raising... Uh, and all the other characters that you remember seeing, they look like him, but they just don't look that good. Yeah. They just It's just bad. Lobster Johnson comes in and starts shooting people. He's like a throwaway Captain America, something like that, and uh, so they do the origin. It's Thomas and, Hayden Church. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah which is funny. It's funny that it's him, uh, but anyway. So then this, uh, you know, the witch comes, gets her all par her parts back, and basically what she's trying to do, she's trying to convince Hellboy to, to join uh, her, to join her, and bring, bring about the end of, of Earth. Uh, yeah, bring all the goblins and all the weird uh, things back to Earth, uh, right? Yeah. They, they want to rule. They want to take over. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I don't know how if we're going to skip skip a far ahead, but uh, basically, so Hellboy needs to figure out where uh, this evil sorceress is located. So somehow 
Baba Yaga summons him to her little abode, yeah. which is in another dimension, I guess. Uh, he's, I'm guessing this has to be based on the comic books, but he's apparently had a run-in with Baba Yaga before, and he banished her to some other, you know, adjacent dimension, as uh-huh. he calls it. So anyways, he goes to this house that's on walking stilts. Which and, is cool, uh, Yeah, no, it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's kind of something out of Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, yes. So he goes in there, and he, like, makes a, a pact with Baba Yaga that he she will get one of his eyeballs, and she will tell him where Nimue is. And they yeah. fight. And then there's no resolution for the Baba Yaga character. No, she, no. she never gets the eyeball. She, she's just gone. The whole rest of the movie is just, yeah. just gone. <laughs> and, and of course, there's a new characters involved, too. There's a, a girl that he saved. She had like... Yeah, Alice. Is the Alice, character. yeah, she's from... The, and then the, there's a Puma character guy. Yeah. There's no age safety. He gets there's a little no, flashback, too, to kind of show nothing. that... Yeah. It, he's, it's he's, he's a werewolf, but he's a, a cheetah werewolf. Da- yeah. Daimyo or something like I that. I can't remember Puma. the character. All Puma. I know is uh, <laughs> it's bad CG, guys. Yeah. And uh, it's just, he, I wanted to love the movie. I wanted to love Hellboy. I wanted to just, just, <laughs> yeah. so, I want to cry. So basically, they end up fighting. So Baba Yaga tells them she's that the evil sorcerer's witch is going to be at the, uh, what was it called? The Pendle Hill. It That's is, where she, is this tree up. where they cut her up. And so her blood is like in this tree. So she's got all her body parts back together. Now all she needs is her blood. So she's at Pendle Hill. And Hellboy and Alice and the cheetah guy end up going to try to Pendle Hill to try and stop her. And when they get there, she's already gotten the blood out of the tree and she's too powerful. Somehow she sum- summons a bunch of zombies to try and slow him down. And then when he when Hellboy finally gets there, she ends up just summoning a portal and going through this portal. B- but first, breaking off a piece of a crown and throwing it at yeah, Alice. This, and it to me, this is one neck. of the, the biggest... Yeah biggest groans in the film is this this Pendle Hill scene should have been the climax of the film. Yeah. This, this is where it should have been over. But instead... Yeah, she, in fact, r- at, during the sequence, she summons you know, she has like her Braveheart speech and says, you know, all of these creatures from the from the underground come up to the light now that, you know, she's in charge. And this huge army of like orcs <laughs> and, you know, Lord of the Rings troll type things come out and then they all just they run, run away. away. Yeah, one, they run away. One, one problem happens. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she's trying to trick him to go... Basically, his... Hellboy's bloodline is King Arthur's bloodline. Okay? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. So, he's the only one that can wield Excalibur. The whole trick is, when he touches Excalibur, that's the end of the world. Because as soon as he holds it, his horns grow back, all this stuff, you know? So she tricks him, goes into a portal, he thinks he's going to go get it to stop her, the sword. Yeah. Well, she, she basically tricks him into yeah. going to find Merlin. To uh, yeah. to save the life of Alice. That's correct. Uh, it's it's Merlin's zombie. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> so they they travel, you know, in the span of ten minutes, they travel to like fifty different locations. But now they're in some underground cave where Merlin's, you yeah, know, uh, some zombified corpses. Some are. island cave out in the middle of nowhere with Merlin's ghost. Yeah. And but yeah, anyway, cell phone reception. So Merlin is the one. Yeah. <laughs> but, out of nowhere, somebody makes a phone call and. Says, hey guys, we need you back at the headquarters. That's another yeah. thing. If they ever have to go somewhere, they might be in the middle of nowhere. They get to the other place yeah. in five minutes. It's crazy. Yeah. It's t- but, some teleportation. So he something. touches the Excalibur sword and, and he kind of re- sees, sees the future. He yeah. sees him destroying Earth, which is a dope scene. Yeah. Seeing it happen is really cool. Um, so he refuses to take yeah. Excalibur, and then Merlin withers away. I guess he used his the last of his magic to summon this, you know, Excalibur to the so. cave in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Yeah, eventually Anyways. they come. So back they to they the do get a phone Rondo. call that's saying, "Oh, the BPRD is under attack by Nimue." So yeah. they it's go straight the there. Place. Yeah, <laughs> in a matter of well, second. they go there and then they end up at a church, which yeah. lo and behold, the real Excalibur happens to be underneath this yeah. church, and so they so just stumble upon it. And that's like the end kind of thing where <laughs> so there's this he, big, he has to save him. Yeah, well, there's this big battle with the pig guy. Uh, yeah, not really big, pretty boring. Yeah, but, but it, it is lengthy. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a long. And then you get but, this whole Silent Hill bit where the demons of the underworld. Well, because he, he grabs to, Excalibur. Yeah. He ends up grabbing the sword to use it against her because it's the only thing that can kill her. But when he pulls it out, he becomes the the resurrect whatever. Yeah, and, and so the it, ground opens up, and yeah. these giant demons come out and start killing all the citizens. Of that's the, the best, second best part of the movie. It, it's it's it's, it's a very interesting sequence, but it's kind of out of left field it's, yes. because there's nothing else quite this violent and, and so strange out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, Interesting creature design. Faces are being yeah. ripped off. It's, it's, awesome. it's, it's almost like, uh, what was it, that, the climax of Event Horizon or something. It's like this <laughs> yes. visualized hell where everybody's being mutilated. Yeah. yeah. And then eventually, you know, whatever. But, so... <laughs> uh, quick yeah. So quick Hellboy ends up just, instead of following his quote-unquote destiny, he uh, just cuts off Nimue's head with the 
Excalibur. Who knew it would be so yeah. easy? Yeah. And then he, you know, puts it in stone. He lefts it and he cuts his horns off again, like he always does. And then you know, real quick, there's a surprise scene at the end. Uh, they're in another case, him and the new group, and uh, they open up a door or whatever, and it's Abe Sapien's tube or whatever, you know, his yeah. water tube. Yeah. So and he puts his hand on the thing. So, so okay. then Siberia, I guess. It's a little right. tease for you know if or, there's ever um, a sequel. I guess Abe Sapien will finally be part of this team if yeah. they make more than a hundred thousand dollars on this movie. But yeah. uh, <laughs> well, there's there's even another cut scene yeah, at the very end. They're going not to Marvel. Even, yeah, right? they like do some credits and then they cut to the scene where Hellboy's oh, in a graveyard right. and he kind of just has this like. Because uh, they killed know. his dad. We missed that part. Yeah. They killed his dad, and. Uh, Lobster Johnson comes back. Like, <laughs> this character that makes no sense. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I don't guess it's the ghost there. of Lobster Johnson. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. In the sa- it happens to be in the same graveyard. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, yeah. The, everybody's buried in that that same <laughs> graveyard. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, you know, if you want to see it, go. You can watch this. You don't care about any other. <laughs> but you can check their ri- written review at comicthetwins.com. For me, guys, I know it's a little bit over, but I was very upset about the whole thing. I'm a big, uh, you know fan of the Guillermo del Toro movies, oh boy, and I wanted completion, and we're starting all over again, so, uh, and it's it's not even close to those. Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem, is that you have two prior films to compare this to, and this one doesn't hold up to those. Because it's all CG, and it's not all actual. Yeah. So, I think, what do you guys think? Uh, the same it, for me, for me, it's just, it's the storytelling. I, I think a lot of the problems could be forgiven if they told the story, uh, better and <laughs> yeah. cut out <laughs> half the stuff in the yeah and, and also uh, david harbour's performance had he had a little bit more you know enthusiasm i, I think it would have i think it would have uh, come come across better yeah because he had the look and i was like oh maybe this can save this movie but then his act he started acting and it was just like <laughs> damn it or the lack of acting maybe. yeah he's reading the script and you, yeah it. you don't feel the emotion there's there's essentially no emotion in this film mike you that We've said, it all. we've said it all yeah we said it all guys uh i hope you guys enjoyed this video again if you're new to my channel please sub check them out at gone with the twins.com and uh leave a comment for them and uh we'll see you next time okay thanks again guys appreciate it